In this video, we're going to learn about the largest triangle three buckets algorithm. This algorithm is used for downsampling time series data to make it easier to visualize. We're going to be using the Kaggle SF Bay Area bike share dataset and in particular the status.csv file. So let's now come over to our Jupyter Notebook and we're going to import the data into ClickHouse. So we've got a ClickHouse server running. So let's import the ClickHouse Connect module and we're then going to connect to ClickHouse on localhost. Now we're going to write an ingest query to create a table called status, the engine merge tree, the sorting key station ID and time, and then we're going to read from the status.csv file inside the Bay Area Bikes zip file, and we're going to make sure none of the columns are nullable by setting this setting parameter. That'll take a few seconds to run, and then once it's done, we're going to write a query to check how many rows we've got. And you can see it comes back with just under 72 million. And let's have a look at a few of the rows. And you can see there we go. We've got a station ID, the bikes available, docks available, and the time. We're now going to visualize the number of free docks over time. So we'll do this with the raw data to start with. So we're going to write a query from the status table, get the time and the docks available between a particular time range at the end of August and early September 2013 for station ID number 70. Then we're going to run the query and then we're going to rename the columns to be X and Y. Let's have a look at the shape of that data frame. So you can see we've got 4,500 rows. And then if we have a look at the first few values, you can see we've got a minute by minute availability of that particular doc. What we're going to do now is use Plotly to create a visualization. So we'll import the Plotly module, and then we're going to create a figure and we're going to add a trace based on the X and Y coordinates of that raw data frame. And if we visualize that, this is the availability of the docs on that particular station. Now let's have a look what happens if we use a simple down sampling technique. So this, in this particular example, we are going to average all the values within a 10 minute bucket. So we're going to write our query. So we're going to say, hey, we want to create a bucket uh, over the time. So we're going to count the average docs available. And then we're going to get the average time within the bucket again for the same time range and the same station ID. So that's going to be a CT called buckets. And then we're going to convert the average bucket time back to a date. And then we'll get the average docs available. Um, and then again, from that buckets table, we'll run the query and then again, rename to X and Y. And if we look at the shape this time, we've only got just over 500 rows. And again, if we look at the values, they're not necessarily on those same time stamps as what we saw before. Let's now create a copy of our initial figure. And then we're going to add a trace for the average uh, data frame with X and Y. And then let's visualize that. And you can see they come back. It's not done a bad job, but there are some uh, differences, notably on the local minima and local maxima. So you can see on, on the left hand side, there's a, there's a slight bit that it's missed. It's sort of down the bottom, there's one. In the middle, there's one as well. And then over on the right hand side, it's missed like a few, a few places from the raw data. So let's now have a look at what happens if we use the largest triangle three buckets algorithm instead. So we're going to write a query. Um, we're going to untuple and array join for the results from the largest triangle three buckets function. It takes in a value that's how many points do you want to have? So we're going to say 500. And then we need to pass in the X, which is the time, and then the Y, which is the docs available. And again, we're filtering, remember, on that particular time range for station ID number 70. We'll run the query, again, renaming to X and Y. And the shape, again, as you would expect, we've got 500 rows. And let's have a look at the values. And again, it's similar to the average one. So they're, they're for different timestamps. Uh, and they've computed a time for that timestamp. We're going to, again, copy the initial figure and add in a trace for the LTTB data frame. And if we now look at that visualization, you can see they're really, really close. There's not a whole lot of difference between it. The only thing that I can really see is right over on the far side, there's just a little dip that the, the downsampled version has missed. Uh, but this looks like a pretty cool algorithm, so give it a try. And if you liked this video, you might also like this one up here that shows how to speed up your queries using materialized views.